Hello, this is John from caveonprogramming.com. Welcome to tutorial number 11, and this tutorial is going to be on arrays of strings in Java. I'm also going to show you a, um, another way of iterating through arrays in Java. And this tutorial is going to be kind of divided into two halves. And then the first half, I'm just going to give you the lowdown on arrays of strings. And then the second half, we'll dig a bit deeper into values and references. Arrays of strings in Java work pretty much the same as arrays of integers. I can type string array words, for example, equals new string array. Let's have, let's say, three elements in this array. I can set the elements by saying words zero equals hello words one equals two and the third element will have index two because I started numbering at zero u um, and I can access those values the same way I could say for example words two which will be u so if I run that I get u down here and um, the same trick with integers um, that I showed you with integers in the last tutorial works with strings. That is, um, here I'm setting, I'm allocating enough memory for three references to strings, actually. And here I'm actually allocating the memory for each of the three actual strings themselves. But I can do all of this stuff, stuff in one step by saying string array fruits, let's say, equals, um, and then I just open curly brackets and I can literally type some strings here, as many as I want. Apple, banana, pear, um, kiwi, whatever. And um, and this is basically equivalent to this, except that here I've got, of course, um, four and here there's three. Um, and uh, I want to show you also a new way of iterating through arrays because in the last tutorial we looked at using for loops with a, a loop index and there's another way of using for loops without a loop index. I can create, declare a variable here that I want to set to each of the array members in turn. I'll call this fruit, let's say. So it's of type string because I'm going to iterate through an array of strings. And then here I put a colon and here I type the name of the array that I want to iterate through. And now Java will set this variable fruit to each of the values of this array in turn. So if I do a sysout, I can say fruit and I get all the values in my array. Um, so that's um, basically all you need to know at a basic level about using strings of arrays. Now I want to tell you a little bit more about um, values and references in the context of arrays particularly. And um, as I always say, the really important thing is just to practice using this stuff. Um, and don't stress about the technical details too much, but if you kind of um, listen to what I'm about to tell you and try to bear it in mind. It'll help you to understand what's what's going on here. So if I declare an int in Java, int value equals um, one, two, three, for example, as we've seen already, um, this is kind of um, enough memory to actually hold an integer. And um, it can only hold an integer. It's It's kind of the right sized bit of memory for an integer. And if I want to set it to some kind of default default value, I could set it equal to zero, let's say. Um, but int, that works because int is um, a primitive type, and you know it's a primitive type because it's got a lowercase letter at the start here. If I type string, um, let's call it, I don't know, text, this is, um, string is a non-primitive type. It's a class, and the giveaway is the capital letter at the top, of, top at the at the start of string here. And um, this isn't actually allocating enough memory for a string because 
how would you know how long your string is going to be? And of course you don't. Um, this is allocating enough memory for a reference to a string. And a reference is just basically an address of some memory. So you could think of this as being a bit like a scrap of paper that you scribble down the address of your house on, where your house in this um, slightly convoluted metaphor is the string. So this is just the address of your string. Um, and the default value for references is, um, is null. So um, null is just kind of like, it just kind of means point this reference at nothing. So it's not pointing anywhere. And I can do a sys out on that actually. I can say um, sys out text and then I get null. And this, this isn't the string of characters, N-U-L-L. -L. This is an actual special type that means kind of nothing. So if I um, create an array in Java of strings, like this, if I say string tets with an S there, um, and of course I need the um, array brackets here, then um, again, this is a reference that can point at an array actually of references to strings. Um, so let's say I do new string array and I have like two references in my array. Then by default, Java will initialize each of those to null. So if I do sysout text zero, I'm going to get null again here. Um, so this whole thing here is only allocating enough memory for two references to strings. It's not allocating the memory for the strings. When I say text, for example, zero equals one, here I'm allocating memory for a string and I'm pointing this reference here at this string, at this memory, which really contains a string. Um, so this is this is um, a useful thing to begin to get your head around at this stage. But as I say, don't stress about it because um, it's something that you can absorb gradually as you go along. Um, and in the next tutorial, we're going to look at multidimensional arrays, um, which um, you can think of, for example, as as tables. And um, I hope you'll join me then. It'll, this will be tutorial number 12. Um, and until then, happy coding.